Mm. Hey! As hey. always, Hi. where are you? What are you doing? Hey! Hey! hey. 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 <laughs> where are you? Don't forget, like, share. Angry Art. face, what, whatever you're gonna do, no, do it. No, angry face. face is like really no. We like smiley faces better. Yes, over here on this side of the yeah. table. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, so you can do angry face if you. Frowny face for Brian. <laughs> smiley face for Janelle. Like share whatever you need to do. <laughs> so what are we talking about today? Today we're gonna suggest that perhaps you consider, if you're frustrated with your job, moving mm. to Middle Earth. Oh, <laughs> Middle Earth. I get, yes. I get it. Yep. Find, it. Go, go to Hobbiton or. Yeah. Um, Zandriel. Rivendell. Rivendell. What do oh, I mean? Florian. <laughs> this New York Not Times article. <laughs> Don't go to Mordor. Okay. Off limits. Uh, <laughs> so this New York Times article brings up a really interesting experiment from New Zealand. For those not familiar, oh, yeah. that's where they filmed um, Lord of the Rings. Middle Earth is Lord of the Rings. Anyway. It all ties nice. together. Yeah. So a New Zealand firm lets employees work four days a week while being paid for five. And says the experiment was so successful that it hoped to make the change permanent. Now, lest Ooh. you be confused, they didn't make them work for like 12 hour days. Or four tens. Or four tens yeah. or whatever it would be. I don't do math, mm -hmm. look at me. I'm four radio. 12, what are you <laughs> doing? Four 13, <laughs> losing money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They literally, regular work day, four, not five days. And so here's how it worked. They decided to try this. The, or the company's perpetual guardian. They manage trusts, wills, and estates. And they had 240 employees. And what they found is that th they decided to run the experiment and ask a, a separate firm to evaluate what happened. What, did it work or not? And they found it boosted productivity. The people were happier because they spent more time with families, exercising, cooking, working in their gardens. Employees reported a 24% improvement in work-life balance. Yeah. That came to work energized on their days uh, after their days off. <laughs> Supervisors said staff were more creative. Their attendance was better. They were on time. They didn't leave early or take long breaks. And their actual job performance didn't change at all when it went from four to five days. And the meeting time was reduced. Meetings went from two hours to 30 minutes. Talk about being efficient. Mm. I want to give a shout out Good. to Kali. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong. She Kelly. said she, Kali, right? Thing. Yeah, I was like, she yeah. said she loves my shirt. Aww. You're my girl, Callie. And hi, Myrna. Myrna's laughing at Brian. And, um, <laughs> of course, <laughs> I like Ron's shirt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, Maynard. So, do you think uh, it would help you to have a four day week, or should companies in the United States do it? What do you think, Brian? One thing or I Ron? would note is apparently this company is a more of a mentally challenging job than a physically challenging job right mm. which you know may play into it you get drained <coughs> mentally so you take a break you go to the bathroom even if you don't have to go to the bathroom you you know stretch out meetings from 30 minutes to two hours yeah just so you can get away from your desk for a while um, mm. and and maybe that's part of it if like my UPS job it's there's not a lot of mental to it you just go in and you move a box from here to here and here to here. So I think the physically would be the part why they would want the time off. Well, and who and doesn't want to get paid extra eight hours well, for not working? <laughs> that's just it. Yeah, for sure. Well, and in Sweden, I guess they tried this at a company that w where they did something a little different. They mandated a six-hour day. Right. Five days Crazy. a week. Crazy. Mandated. It's like, get out of here after six hours. Yeah. Officials found employees completed the same amount of work or even more. Because one of my underlying questions is, what are we all doing? <laughs> <laughs> if a company can go from five to four days or from eight to six hours and the same amount of work gets done. Right. It's crazy. Right? Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of lost time in there somewhere. And somehow we don't need all that time. Yeah. Hmm. Uh... Does that, does that promote laziness, though? No, I think it promotes efficiency. And mm -hmm. just to go, just to, for you know, to be there, just to be there. Mm -hmm. First, you're paying your employees unnecessarily. Mm -hmm. You're sacrificing things like your health, your family. Yeah. It also shows the big picture of how balance helps. Like, you know, in the United States, we're so work, 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 and... You know, and, and trying to be, to to bring results that we forget. Like, wait, hold up, shutting down 
work and taking care of my other areas, exercise, mm -hmm. my family, gardening, etc., whatever it is for you, mm -hmm. helps you be more efficient at the work that you care. You want to be excellent right. in your job. That doesn't mean necessarily longer hours and sacrificial time. It, it means balance. It's just showing that. To me, it is. Uh, Callie says, my husband is our breadwinner, and I think he would go crazy with the work week to be four days. <laughs> He's always had a hard time being home on the weekends. He's a self-employed general contractor. Janelle, you were close to wow. saying my name correct. Brian was right. Say it. What is it? Callie. Callie. Okay, Br Callie. Brian was right. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> Asada, hi Asada, and um, yeah, so what, I, do you feel like it would make you more efficient overall? I, I think it may be one of the only solutions to uh, the fact that the workplace no longer has a boundary Here. because of technology. Yeah. I think there was a time when, it's hard to imagine, right, when you go to work and you had a phone and a pad of paper. Yeah. And a typewriter, right. and when you left, like nobody right. could get to find you. Like yeah. they wouldn't call you at home. It'd be crazy. Yeah. Right. But now everything follows us. Memos follow us. Everything follows us. We have a hard time mm -hmm. being home. We go crazy being home. It may be one of the only ways to dial that back, and to change that is to change the cultural shift of this. But what's interesting is only, I think there's only a few cultures that would need this. Like I've I've read about Japanese culture. It's kind of like ours, and in its intensity for work. It's really yeah. intense. Yeah. But look at Mexico. Like, it's culturally acceptable to have, help me understand, I know you're not Mexican, but a siesta. In yeah. Dominican Republic, mm -hmm. it's like that, so I can't speak for Mexico because I'm not Mexican, I haven't been to Mexico, well, I've been to Mexico, but whatever. So in Dominican Republic, you get from 12 to 2 off, and people literally go home and eat, and take a nap or do whatever, mm -hmm. and then go back to work. And so well, part you of that... Is less intense that is? Yeah. Big time. It's way Especially more relaxed if your hard. job is close. I mean, if you've got, like here, a half hour to an hour commute, right? then going home, is you turn around and go right back to work. Right. And But what we do in America is working lunches. Yeah. We oh, take lunch my goodness, breaks. yes. I, and, I could see two, two classes here. Um, the working group that I know, there are some who are hard workers, strong work ethic, boom. They... They could really flourish in this because they do work efficiently and work hard. There's also people like at, at UPS. If you have, if you take a day off sick, you're allowed mm -hmm. a second day sick without a doctor's excuse. Mm -hmm. The third day, you have to have a doctor's excuse to come back. So everybody, well, 95% of the people take that second day. They call it a twofer. Mm -hmm. It's part of the culture. And you're not sick. You just you can get a second day off without having to do anything. So they do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and so it it would give license to the lazy. Exactly. Mm -hmm. To not do as much. But I don't know. I guess there would still be consequence for laziness in some respects. Yeah. Uh, by the way, hey Mike, what's up? Hi Rob. John. Hi guys. John, I heard you're doing great with your new position. That's super awesome. Hi Yvonne and Maynard Phyllis. All right. M Myrna says. Um, we love Myrna, except for yes. when she agrees with Brian. Then it's like, Myrna, what's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> she says, I think for families, this would be great. Having only two days off, especially on the weekend, seems like you never get anything done or spend much quality time as a family. When I worked for 10 days as an officer, mm -hmm. having a day during the week off allowed me to enjoy spending time with my son and leaving the weekday to get things done around the house, run errands, make appointments. Yeah, yeah. Good But point. part of my question with that is, do you think that some of it is a mm -hmm. mindset? So what I'm thinking, because of our mindset here in the Western world, if we got four days, we would do the same thing we did with two. We would fill it up with a bunch of stuff. Mm. You know, because you know how she's mm -hmm. saying, oh, yeah. three's not enough. Would we really, would that really tone us down mm -hmm. and, in oh, terms I, of our I intensity? See. So is the, so, so you're saying, is the, the five-day work week the cause of the intensity or is it something else? Right. Because if it is the cause, four days is the solution. Right. right. If right. it's not the cause, it's not the solution. It's mm -hmm. not. Like in terms of, and I'm talking about in terms of balance. They're saying, oh, it gives me more time to exercise, spend time with family. That's great. But if you don't fix your mindset, that's not going to fix it. All you're going to do is one more day to get stuff done. 
Right. I could take another part-time job. Exactly. Oh, sure. Exactly. That's what you would do. For sure. Yeah. That's what right. you would do. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or no. No, I don't think it's the reason. I don't... So you do think it's a five-day work week. Why? What? What? I think that we've created a culture where work is important and you're a good employee only if you work long hours and do more than ex is expected of you. I think the American ethos is, hey, how you doing? I'm Brian. What do you do for a living? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know that any of that is necessarily biblical, but the problem is not that we're forced to work too much, it's that we choose to work more yeah, than absolutely. we are required. Absolutely. And that we have employers who, I don't think necessarily maliciously, but the boss who emails on the weekend doesn't realize they're creating pressure to respond on the weekend. Right. And, you know I mean? and that it's working against them. Mm -hmm. If as yeah. a boss and as a leader, another reason to share this video so maybe your boss or people of influence you know. can watch this. <laughs> no, that's why, not, not why you shared it. <laughs> yeah, but you yeah exactly, yeah. you know. If your boss is watching, you didn't. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Asada <laughs> said, Jamaica is the same way. You can have strong work ethic, work hard, but have time to sleep, spend time with mm -hmm. family members, volunteer. Oh, my goodness, yes. Richard, um, he's on uh, his 10-minute work. A week, ten minute break at work. Oh okay. my goodness! Richard. Hey, hey, <laughs> <laughs> Richard. So Richard, cool. you deserve a longer break, bro. Yeah, yeah. That's right. You're working too hard. So, um, if we know that it's a mindset, e whether or not this trend comes to the United States, what can we do about the balance? What can we do with the two weeks we do get off to have? Is it the like? In those two days, we should be able, and the 40 hours, to exercise, cook, families. Yeah. You can't, we can't sit back and wait till that comes to us so that it fixes us. It's, we can fix it. Yes. So how can we empower ourselves to say, man, we need more balance? I, one thing is, we've heard, I'm not sure who it was who said it, but I, I've heard it several times about if you keep a schedule of your time, block out time for certain events. Mm. Like if you need... To your best at reading your emails in the morning, block out an hour that says emails. Right. If you're going to take your wife out on a date, block out that time oh, on yeah. your calendar and say, this cannot be touched. And then you don't mm -hmm. accidentally do it. Yes. Or if somebody yeah. says, hey, are you busy at this time? You can look at your calendar and legitimately say, yes, yes I've got something scheduled. Well, and I think that's I really that. important, too, because there's this fear of missing out on opportunities and that if you block out time, then you've missed something of like moving up professionally yeah. if you aren't doing everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's that challenge. And you well, know what? This is not just a corporate issue. I'm sure you've mm -hmm. seen this. You've seen this in ministry. Pastors, yeah. oh, leaders. Goodness, yes. Like yeah. we don't know how to put it down and just be mm -hmm. with family. You know, it's like a constant run. And it's not even just the days and the weeks. It's the years of people mm -hmm. not knowing and okay, like I'm picturing just to put like somebody that's not in ministry, Barbara Walters. They said she was like struggling letting go of her career and retiring. This woman was like mid eighties, and they would hear yeah. her crying in the ba like backstage. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh my gosh, when you get to the point where who you are is what you do, like your work, yeah. where you mm -hmm. can't say I am done, whether it's on the weekend or whether it's during the day, just like mm -hmm. I'm spending time with my kids. That's a problem. Do you think it's an identity thing? Oh, yeah. We can't let our job mm -hmm. be our, our, our identity, which touches to, like, two issues we have to address mm -hmm. as Christians. Number one, what are biblical priorities for life? Mm -hmm. And do we really believe them? Mm -hmm. Right? So, correct me if I'm wrong. Love God. Love your neighbor. Right. Um, those who don't take care of their own family are worse than an unbeliever. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. God first. And your family next, and your neighbor are, are, are like the kind of these this, the top, and then the next two are kind of together, right? Yeah. Where's job in there? Yeah. Or, where is it? But the, but the Bible oh, says, to, says to do your best. Yeah. Work work heartily with all exactly. your might, as if working for the Lord. And I don't think it means to work hard to also work on the weekend. Do you see? Yeah. So, I think it becomes a personal personal accountability issue of. Are you willing to really believe what you believe and act on it? As in, you're going to say to yourself, when I go home, I'm done. I don't care if it costs me the promotion. Oh, yes. I don't care if it costs me 
you know, the favorite of my boss, but God's expectations of me are that when I'm home, I'm home. Yeah. 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 Mm. Myrna is highlighting, which I thought about and I didn't want to bring up because I was like, well, maybe that's a different conversation, but thank you for bringing it up. Think about the school year. Some of these kids are getting so much homework that the weekday is a wash for anything in the family. My experience in my school was like that. Literally, I would get home at six and it was literally more than three hours of homework just the weekday. And we were required to do an after school activity. That's one thing. But even mm -hmm. recently I've talked to, I've uh, read articles talking about how starting school later is way more efficient and mm -hmm. better in terms of mental health, especially for high schoolers. Why aren't mm -hmm. we doing that? Mm -hmm. You know, and it's, it's a little bit of well, because this is the way we've always done it. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit of like, no, like you kind of have to fill the day to feel like, well, you're doing something, you're there. And yeah. and in this case with work, mm -hmm. you know, like it looks inefficient to just do four hours, 32 right. hours, four days, 32 hours. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? It's a little bit like, no, you're supposed to work every day and fill the day. Yeah. That's not true, though. We're, we're, we're supposed to rest on the seventh day. Mm -hmm. Or whatever or day. What we have freedom in the choose. New Testament to choose the day. Yeah. But. I love Danielle. Um, Danielle, hi. She said, like, great topic team. She's like, do I need to tag President Mark Job to just let him know Hello. that we need a four-day work week? Good job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Did John, you see John's comment? John yeah, is John. actually, he's in full-time ministry. He says, I struggle with having to finish things before I leave work. So I find myself staying late to finish things often. If I don't, then I think about work all night at home. Thank you for your honesty, John. Thank because you. Because I think most honest people who work in, I can't speak to blue collar, but I can say in white collar work, it's never done. Mm -hmm. It's not like you've made X number of widgets, which is noble work. Like it's never done. There's always another report. There's always another something. Someone else can speak to blue collar. I can. Blue I can't collar speak to all day long. I I, see, I hear about the issues with Len at work. Just think about. Factories or manufacturing, which works never Ohio, there. Never. But There's your always shift is a done. the shift is done. Yeah. But it's always that issue. A key struggles with that way, where he was like, he's told me, I just don't like doing incomplete work. Mm -hmm. So he struggles mm -hmm. leaving on time. Yeah. Because he's like, in my conscious, it feels uncomfortable. But I'm like, babe, the way you talk, it's mm -hmm. like. It's always incomplete, so you have yeah. to just shut yeah. it down. So then perhaps I'm using the wrong dichotomy. Perhaps it's uh, full-time salaried versus hourly. Because an hourly employee oh, yeah. has every right to say, no, you're not paying me, I'm not doing yes. this. Yes. Yeah. But the salaried employee ultimately does not does but does not have that boundary. Somebody brought that, that up. Yeah, yeah. it's true. Somebody um, brought up salary. Yeah, I'll yeah. bring it up. It's, but it's, what like, are we it's like they own you if they have salary. We, oh, we feel yeah. like they own us. Yeah. And there is, in some respects, like being a salaried employee, there are expectations that you will sometimes work more, sometimes work less, I think. But we can still draw a line. Okay. And I think we all struggle mm -hmm. with what that one individual said. What was it, Robert? John. What John said. Oh, yeah. yeah. That he finds it difficult if he doesn't complete his work and he stays yeah. a little extra to finish. He stays late. And if he doesn't, he thinks about work all night. So how do you disconnect? How do you leave it unfinished so you can go be with your family and then disconnect? And how do you do that, Ron? How do you do that? How do you disconnect with good conscience? Because if you want to be faithful, part of you is, if it has that guilt of like, man, but I can do a little more. I can do a little more. Because yeah. you want to be faithful to your job. One suggestion would be to talk to your immediate boss, your supervisor, manager, whatever his title might be, and tell him your frustration and if he's a good leader he's probably going to say that's just how the nature of our business is don't worry about it you've done all you can do today tomorrow's another day we'll hit it when you come back and, and on that i was gonna i was yeah. gonna ask you i've experienced and i'm sorry about if i cut you off I thought, <laughs> no, i've experienced good. even in the church being asked to do things and it got to a point where I was like, wait, hold up. Like, this is a lot. And for a second, I thought, wait, this is from the church. So they know my what my priorities should be. So maybe it's mm -hmm. okay. And then I realized, wait, I'm supposed to protect my family. Right. right. Not even, like, expect church leadership. So my question to you is, what if your boss doesn't get that? 
What if they're like, no, like like you said, you get that email on the weekend. Or you're on, I've seen it on vacations. Okay, Calls. so then the f first step is, boss, I need to ask you a question. When you email me on the weekend, do you expect a response on the weekend? Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've had supervisors here at the station who've been really good about saying, I want you to know. If I email you, you don't have to respond if you're not at work. Mm -hmm. But if yeah. I text you, I need you to get back to me right away. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. Sometimes it just means asking. And if they mm -hmm. say, no, no, if I email you at midnight on Saturday, you have to respond right away. Here's what you do. Get a different job. Yeah. <laughs> right. Because that's it's yeah. inappropriate. It's unfair. Yeah. Maybe even talk to their supervisor. That's not a healthy yeah. work environment, so nor, is what you, nor is it what you signed up for. Mm -hmm. but, Mike says, oh, go ahead. Well, I was also going to say one of my solutions that perhaps it's good or not to the person who can't disconnect is get a hobby. Yeah. Mm. Find something yeah. Yeah. in which yeah. you are able to actually disconnect and then maybe you have to almost create this like religion where you like religiously go home, do the hobby to disconnect and then you can. Oh, that's a good, yeah. You, you and I found the same one. Right. When I'm in the garage, Oh, you do like, work like him? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, when, well, like, Ron and I figured out that when I'm, when we're doing separately, obviously, or maybe together someday, working on, like, a woodworking project just for fun, my mind, like, foc it can focus on it. I forget about work. Yeah. I forget about my phone. I can disconnect. Yeah. That enables me to just reset. Yeah. Great input. Oh, Asada says, as a salary employee, mm -hmm. I had major disconnect issues. I needed to get help. My boss would daily call my office to remind me to leave at a decent hour. My career in, um, in working with serving others mm -hmm. is so rewarding that I would get lost in my career. That happens, too. Mm -hmm. You can but love your career. So, and that's where you see it in ministry. Yeah. The boss is saying, leave, leave, leave. She's like, oh, but I don't want to. Yeah. But no, you need to. Yeah. I mean, praise God for a boss like that. Yeah. It is not healthy nor wise to let your job be your first love. Right. I love my job, too. I got to say, I struggled for a long time not, like, eat, sleeping, and breathing this. My wife, Sarah, is here. Hello, Sarah. She would tell you, and she can be mad at me for calling her out. What, what, what do you want? Yeah. She used to say, like, Brian, I need you here. You're home, but you're not home. Yeah. You're at the office. I need you here. Yeah. That's not good for my family. We've mm. got to find ways to disconnect. Yeah. Yeah. Right, Sarah? Aww. I've gotten better. <laughs> I've gotten better, but I heard that enough times from her that I had to make changes. <laughs> yeah. It's not fair to my wife for me to be somewhere else. Well, yeah. And my dad was diagnosed with cancer when I was in college, mm. and that was a great awakening for him to be like, I'm at work too much. I'm at work too much. Yeah. And life is short. Yeah. Work is always going to be there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You yeah. Know? I think it, we have to be especially mindful based on things I've seen and heard mm -hmm. with ministry, you know, because a lot of times good work or God's work is yeah. difficult to, it's more difficult to separate. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? The, because it's good stuff and you're serving God and that's good. Mm -hmm. But God says your family comes first. So and I've then, seen families sacrificed in, in the name of God's work. Mm -hmm. So then saying no is a solution. To good things. Yes. Yes. To good, good things. Be. So it could be even the boss comes and says, you you have to leave at 5 because your kid's game starts at 5.30. Um, hey, I need your help. I need you to get this done quick and go, no, I'm sorry, I can't. My son has a game and I've got to go. I'll work on this first thing in the morning. <sighs> what if you lose my job? Uh, what if you lose your son? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hello. Like oh. long term, your kid looks back and says, Dad, I don't, you didn't care about me years ago. Why would I hey, know you now? Yeah, if you ever saw the movie Hook, with Robin Williams, yeah. it's a Peter Pan movie. Mm -hmm. That was him. He was all about work all the time. He he had hired somebody to videotape his son's games because he was always <laughs> missing. Mm. Wow, that's how bad his life was, and right. ends up that he gets a, an awakening. Good that's movie. um good reference. Coming right out of college, it was like early two thousands when a lot of people were getting laid off, mm -hmm. and Len would come home with stories of people getting laid off. And I realized, I'm like, oh my goodness, these are people that have worked there 30, 40 years. Yeah. And how quickly a company will let you go. And it made me realize, these are people that probably sacrificed games from their kids, their marriages. You know, and then I realized it's not worth doing it for them. 
because at the end of the day, they don't, you know, it's not like they mm -hmm. prioritize you. It's about the bottom line, which, you know, that's the way business is. And what we're preaching to ourselves, by the way, in this, we need to hear it all the time as well. But it's one of those where we always have that fear, what if I lose my job? Because you said no to prioritize things and draw lines mm -hmm. professionally that are going to keep you healthy mm -hmm. and biblical. What if you lose your job? Well, don't you trust God to take care of you? Yeah. What, you think God's not sovereign? <laughs> right. It might not be easy. That's what I was going to say, because it doesn't mean you'll, I mean, yeah, that'll right. be easy. By the way, Peter Worrell says I like your conversation. Peter is a professor at Moody. Hey, Thank bye. you. Very much. <laughs> Woo. Wow. And wow. that means, yeah. that means we work for, with people that agree You're with balance. Me, really. Oh, you. Thank you, Peter. Uh, uh, <laughs> Joshua, hello, Joshua. He says it makes for a long day. John, again, he's in ministry full-time, says part of the hardship in ministry is that I feel like there is no appropriate line between work and life. Like, when is it good? When is it a good time to start ministering to others? Or to stop ministering. Yeah, yeah. but you know, here's the thing, John. Jesus didn't heal everybody. He did. Yeah, that's true. He walked away from crowds sometimes. There this, were people who were yeah. suffering and yeah. wanted to be healed who didn't get to the front of the line. John, listen to this in line with what Brian's saying. Uh, Pastor Tanks just commented, and he's in full-time ministry. He's ordained. And he says, not stopping, says we think we are the ones doing it. When mm -hmm. we understand God is the one doing it, and we only partner with him, no becomes easier. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like what you were saying. Like, yeah. Yeah. even Jesus said no. Like, yeah. it, there's a bigger work yes. that has nothing to do with you. You're just kind of part of it. <laughs> yeah, and it's self-righteousness in a way to think that if you say yeah, if you don't say yes, God can't work. Yeah. Mm. I love you, but he doesn't need you. <laughs> he right. He's going to get it done whether or not you say yes. Right. Yeah. And maybe if you say yes, you're actually getting in the way of someone who would do it better. Right. And be more dedicated and have more time. Right. Yeah. Sarah and I have, have had to practice really hard saying no. Mm. And you, you're forced to do this when you have a lot of kids. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, I, I can't. I don't have enough hours in the day to let my kids do whatever activity they want. Mm. We're forced to tell them, you can do a thing, maybe two. Because think about that. Let's say everybody does two things, five kids, that's ten activities. I can't do that. Mm -hmm. I can't do it. Yeah. yeah. So we're forced to learn how to say no to things. Yeah. But yeah. we're still working on it. It's not easy. It's not easy. It's not easy. And I've, I've even felt with my schedule, Myrna says, uh, I, I always try to remember that God is not uh, impressed with my busy schedule and in keeping with that it's not I realized like a one-time no mm -hmm. it's like a constant daily like mm -hmm. you're almost like protecting and blocking out things because yeah. everybody <laughs> has that little thing they need you to do including our kids everybody mm -hmm. you know and by I'll the time no you realize it you're like oh my goodness <laughs> what did you say I say no to them all the time, all the time. <laughs> or, or, or my favorite is maybe oh yeah, maybe We'll which, see. which they'll learn. That means no. <laughs> I just don't want to say it right yeah. now. And let me just say that John and Tanks, you guys ought to connect. Hello. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, Tanks, you can give John wisdom that we can't. Please, of, yes. Of work there. Just a suggestion. Maybe you two want to connect offline on this one. Absolutely. Yeah, do a little <laughs> no church place. planning for Reach City Myrna. Church. You could say no. Yeah, yeah. Reach City Church, yes. And Myrna, hashtag Team Brian, she says, Amen, Brian. Ooh. We often are in the way of others using their gifts. Ain't that the truth? Yeah, like, honestly, there could be, you saying yes to something that you really ought to say no to and you know it, is getting in the way of someone who do a better job than you. Right. And if you think no one can do a better job, you're prideful and better repent right now. Um, I want to highlight Jennifer's comment because yeah. we're talking about corporate. We're talking about ministry. We see this in the home. She says, I think this culture even spills over into stay-at-home moms. I thought I would be able to slow down when I stayed home, but I found things to fill my time. I made things from scratch that I didn't need <laughs> made from scratch <laughs> and found projects to work on that I didn't yeah. need worked on. I do that with the kids. Oh, my goodness. I always feel like they'll be playing by themselves or even bored. And I'll feel guilty, like, yeah. oh my goodness, I'm neglecting them, or yeah. I should be on the yeah. on the floor playing with them. Yes, this new thing I have now, I they'll play in the park, and I walk around the park. I got six kids, I, so I'm like, whatever, they'll be all right. Sit down. They made a bench yeah. there for a reason. And when I so I'm walking because I'm exercising. So my oh, talk yeah. to make myself feel better is I'll live longer for them. I'll live. Longer. 
<laughs> you know, I'd be healthy. But it's also like, wait a minute, mommy wasn't playing with me at the parks, and I was right. okay. And I love my mom, and I got great memories. But you're right. It's our thinking of like we got to do more and we got to do all this stuff that nobody. Yeah. It's not even on the jobs. And can I just say, being a stay-at-home mom is a full-time job in itself. Mm -hmm. Like props. Oh yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a lot of work, and it's a job that never ends. Oh yeah. Yeah. I love, love, love the comments. I love the different levels of corporate ministry, family, and just the importance of. We don't gotta wait till the four-day week comes. If it comes, that's awesome, but we can increase and get better at balancing and yeah. letting go of work. And I want to reemphasize, get a hobby. Mm. I don't have time for a hobby. Yes, you do. Honestly, it's going to change you. Yeah. When I found a hobby, finally, it took me years. It used to be music. I had years without one. Mm -hmm. It was a game changer for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Was that that way for you? Yeah. It, it gave you something to invest in that you <coughs> love doing. Mm -hmm. And... Um, yeah, just you can take pride in what you do, and um, you other learn people like while it. while you're yeah. doing it. Yeah, mm -hmm. you learn a lot, and you engage your brain mistakes. in ways that you're not at work. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, it's good. So, and if you need something to distract you from work, borrow my grandson. He'll keep you busy. <laughs> I know that's right. We got all kinds of kids. We got eleven hang kids. Out. Two of us. You <laughs> yes. have all eleven kids. Come take back them. with them. They won't let you do anything. Hey, Wendy, May, uh, Maynard, Michelle, Brenda, Charlene, Deborah, Sherry, a lot of new names. Yeah. Phyllis, Carol, Sandy, thank you for Rose hanging Marie. with us. Yvonne, Danielle, all of you guys loved your comments, and we always walk away yeah. more enriched. You know, a lot of things to think True about. True that. Mm -hmm. Hasta luego. See you guys Bye. tomorrow. Bye. Tang said that you should go to the gym. <laughs> not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, watch. I'm going to work out. Ready? <laughs> hey, here's another one. Here's another one. Oh, my goodness. Wow. <laughs> right there. Right there. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> work out, Don. Done.